So I want to introduce my next cybersecurity video. Uh, it's one that came about in the most unexpected uh, circumstances. And it actually came from NPR. I have a friend of mine, and he's encouraged me. He says, you know, you need to listen to alternate, uh, the, the, the right, the, the left-wing media, you know, the, the media machine that lies about lies, 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 you know, MSDNC or NBC or NPR. And so I was just tuning in to NPR. It was, it, truthfully, it was because I couldn't find anything else to listen to. I mean, even the music coming down through South Carolina, I mean, uh, it's, it's just horrible. Uh, but anyway, so I found this... Uh, uh, they were talking about your car spying on you. And as you know, I call myself that cybersecurity guy. And this is something, you know, that I am very guilty of. And, and I'm very shocked that, you know, this was uh, an aspect of cybersecurity that I hadn't really thought about. Who would have ever thought that we needed to consider cybersecurity in our car? <laughs> I mean, I, think about it, you know, it just seems like your toothbrush is spying on you or your, your, your coffee maker, you know, is connected to Wi-Fi for whatever reason. I mean, wh why do you want your coffee maker connected to Wi-Fi? It's just, it just seems like everything wants to spy on you, but let's get into the, the I want to, this is the introduction to the video. So, and he always says, you know what, you just spout stuff and you don't give context and you don't give your sources and you don't do this. Well, okay, so this is from um, the New York Times, the most trusted uh, newspaper on the planet, according to the liberals. Uh, to me, it's the biggest rag of a newspaper, just like the Washington Post. But hey, you know, I've got to cite the leftist sources to make the video credible, right? So uh, constant, we are under a constant state of surveillance, and it's just amazing how many avenues it comes at us with. And so this was, uh, this was an article that I found, cause, and, and you can do your own research. I'm just telling you, go out, don't Google it, duck, duck, go, duck, duck, go, or bing.com. Use an alternate search engine because Google's going to censor everything. But anyway, so I found this article, and it, it, the title was, Florida man sues GM and Lexus Nexus over sale of his Cadillac data. His auto insurance rate doubled <laughs> as a result of his driving habits. <laughs> and you know what? My friend up in, uh, uh, in North Carolina, his driving habits, if he was being monitored, I'm going to tell you what, his, his car insurance rates would double for sure. Uh, <laughs> but, but I mean... This was, the, this was the whole NPR thing. They were talking about the fact that uh, cars are given back to GM, Ford. Uh, they did not mention Chrysler, I, you know, maybe to their credit. They didn't mention Toyota. They did mention, uh, well, let's just get into it. So then, uh, and then, of course, I found this. General Motors admits your driving data may be sold to insurers. When you connect to your, your cell phone, more or less, to your car, you just gave the car company all your data, insurance companies and law enforcement. So I guess where I'm going with this is when you connect your cell phone to the car, all of that information is provided to the car companies. And then the car companies provide all of your contact information, everything that you've given to the car, to the data brokers like LexisNexis. And there's no evidence yet that law enforcement is getting this data, but imagine if you're doing 90 miles an hour, which I had to do down 95, that, uh, that soon we're not going to be getting tickets because our cars are giving data to, to the insurance companies and law enforcement. I mean, can you think about that? I mean, this is, this is so invasive. So the next time you go in to buy a car, this is what I encourage you to do. Ask your dealer if you can disable your car spying on you. And see what see what the salesman says. I just I, I think it would be very entertaining. I might just do it just for the hell of it. You know, I gotta get my car maintenance uh, at the Toyota dealer here in the next month or two. Maybe I'll make a video about it. I'm gonna put put the camera up and, and put the guy on the spot and I'm gonna say how can I disable my Toyota Prius Prime from spying on me and giving all of my driving data to Toyota? And, and by the way, I haven't found any evidence that Toyota is doing this. It's mainly uh, Ford and GM at this point and Mercedes-Benz. Those are the three companies that I know about for sure. 
So then it says uh, automakers are collecting driving data from customers and quietly providing it to insurance companies. And the practice has resulted in some, in some unassuming drivers seeing their coverage increased or even terminated. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine if you're, if you're all of a sudden your insurance company goes, well, based on your driving habits, we're going to terminate your, your insurance. And you go, what are you talking about? I didn't give you, I mean, if, you know, Progressive has that device that you plug in under the dash. And we talk about that in the coming uh, sections. So, so the term, so Lexus, Nexus, and V-E-R-I-S-K, Verisic. I, I don't even know, you know, I tell you, the data brokers are out there. So then the, the last thing I wanted to get before we get into the video, because I got the whole video coming. The Times highlighted the case of Ken Dabal, D-A-B-L, the driver of a leased Chevrolet Bolt, who learned his and his wife's driving habits were being tracked and where an insurance agent uh, in his 2022 uh, report from LexisNexis was a factor in his uh, 20, 2022 premium increase. He, he received a 21% increase in his insurance. <laughs> oh my God. So now your car is spying on you. Let's get into the video. So I'm back after a long trip. Let's get into a little more cybersecurity because I'm sick of the statement, let them spy on me. I don't do anything wrong. Let them spy on me. How many times have you heard that, especially from a Democrat? Well, I got a couple of examples for you. It just so happened I was listening to, of all stations, NPR, on the way back from uh, Virginia to Florida. And uh, it was a, sometimes, you know, they got uh, good stuff on there most of it's just government propaganda but still you know occasionally when you can't find anything else on the radio anyway this was a whole uh a conversation about uh the cars and how cars are spying on you and what the uh, the detriment of that is and uh, i was uh, i was fascinated by the whole thing because i hadn't really thought about it and in fact i'm going to do a future video on how your car spies on you and why you need to care. But let's just get into uh, the gist of that conversation. The first was, uh, I wanna talk about GM. Now, you know GM is a failing company. They went along with the whole uh, woke uh, EV, uh, let's make EV car. Hey, GM, get woke, go broke. Get woke, baby, go broke. There's that nobody wants and uh, nobody's buying them. So they've lost uh, big time there. Uh, and of course the CEO I think is still uh, still has their job. I haven't heard of anybody being fired from GM. It's amazing how these companies can make uh, all the wrong decisions because they got all they got is Ivy League woke uh, people running the companies that don't know crap about business or how to make a profit. But anyway, I expect uh, if you own GM stock, I, <laughs> I, think I, I think I'd be selling it right away. But anyway, so the, what was happening was that, you know GM being desperate for money is there's a there's an app that uh, is installed on the, the uh, car's computer. And I, I can't give you the name of it. I've got, like I said, I'm gonna do a whole video on how your cars are spying on you. But anyway, this app was reporting back uh, everything that the car, you know, how, how fast you're going, whether you're doing hard braking. You know, have you ever seen those progressive devices that you can install under your dash and then they monitor how you drive? And supposedly if you drive well enough, you get a discount. <clears throat> Didn't work out for me because I let a buddy of mine drive my car and he drove like a maniac <laughs> and it blew up the device. In fact, my insurance was going to go up as a result and he was only driving for two days in my car. I mean, it was ridiculous, but uh, some people do uh, drive really, uh, really crazy. What video would be complete without making fun of the mainstream or the lamestream media? GM, the more you spy on your customers and give it to the insurance companies or data brokers, the more people are going to walk away. GM, the more you manufacture EVs that nobody wants, and the more you move your industry to Mexico and, and crap all over the United Auto Workers, the more people are going to flee GM. It's going to be a bloodbath, a bloodbath in the auto industry. As Trump said, you guys are facing a bloodbath. Ford, GM, Chrysler, you're in for a bloodbath. Anyway, so let's get back to the GM cars and how they're spying on you. 
so the, the car's reporting back all this information to GM. Now, in the privacy agreement with GM, and by the way, I encourage you to go read the Google privacy agreement, okay? If you don't believe that everything you do with Google is recorded and then fed to third parties everywhere, uh, you, just read the privacy statement, okay? But anyway, in the privacy statement, it says that Google can share this information with third parties. And so what they were doing is they were selling it to a data broker. Couldn't give you the name of it because uh, I'd never heard of it before. And then that data broker was feeding that information to the insurance companies. And so what happened was a lot of uh, people that own these GM cars, their insurance doubled for apparently no reason. So imagine your car insurance going from a thousand to two thousand overnight. You know, when you go to renew the policy, sudden your policies double what it was. Well, if the insurance companies were buying the information from this data broker and giving it to, um, uh, you know, giving it to the insurance company, so you could see how your information everywhere is being sold and used in a fashion against you. All right. Same with any internet devices. If you got a a toothbrush that's connected to Wi-Fi, it's going to report that information eventually back to the company that, that, that you go for dental. And, uh, and whether you brush long enough or not, they may raise your price for, for going to the dentist. You see, you see how, how insidious all this is. The other story was a Mercedes-Benz. Now, so you, we know now it's not just GM. In fact, that's why I want to make a video all about this, is because uh, my, uh, my Toyota, you know, I was using the uh, onboard navigation. So that means that, you know, I wonder, uh, and I'm going to read the policy for Waze because I was using Waze for my navigation. So I, I wanted to add this to the video. I actually, will, I'll put this clip in where I was talking about how I, we were doing 80, 90 miles an hour on 95. Now, if my car is spying on me, which I bet it is, I'm using, I'm, I use the phone, the Waze on the phone. Now that's also tracking me. So if all that information gets back to the insurance company that I was doing 90 miles an hour just because I'm keeping up with traffic, I bet my insurance is going to double. How about you? Now is Waze porting, reporting back to uh, Google and then Google's giving that to third parties? Probably. Is my insurance going to go up as a result of this trip? Probably. <laughs> that was another thing I wanted to talk about. I mean, the lawlessness that exists these days. I've never seen anything like it. I'm on 95. And, uh, you know, it's, it's mainly to, to be safe, you just have to kind of keep up with traffic. Right? You know, you don't want to be going really slow with people having to work their way around you. Not only would road rage enter into it, but it's dangerous to have those big trucks moving out into the left lane, whipping around you, you know, and coming in. So you just really want to just keep up with the car in front of you, you know, more or less. Now, what, what I had a problem with was <laughs> I couldn't keep up. I mean, luckily I've got re uh, reactive cruise control, but God knows if you haven't got reactive cruise control, I feel sorry for you because I could just set that thing. But what happens is my cruise control, I keep a safe following distance. And so what would happen is people get pissed off and they would go around me and cut in front of me because, and of course, they can't go nowhere because I'm following, I'm literally just following the car in front of me. So I set the cruise control on 85 miles an hour, let's say. And uh, so I'm just cruising along. And, uh, and of course, the car behind me wants to do 90. And that's what I wanted to talk about was the lawlessness. I couldn't go under 80 miles an hour. I mean, and, and I'm talking 60, 65, 70. It didn't matter what the speed limit was on 95. I mean, because I, I'm, I'm packed in with all these cars. And, you know, we're all just, it's like a convoy. You're moving along. And it, what was really weird is, you know, in the past, I used to see cops everywhere. I think I saw in the entire journey for, to Virginia to Florida and, and from Florida to Virginia, I think I saw one cop car. The whole time, well, two. I saw one with somebody pulled over, and I saw one on the side of the road, and that's it. So, I mean, people out there, you, I mean, there are no speed limits no more. <laughs> I mean, as far as I can tell. Now, I haven't been on a long trip in a long time, but that was crazy. But anyway, getting back to the spying. So this woman, she, uh, she, uh, well, her husband was abusive, and he was a federal employee, so he had access to some of the federal uh, information. I don't think he was NSA or anything like that. He might have been, he might have been FBI. They never said which agency he worked for, but he obviously knew his way around the computer and how to get uh, information. So she moved out, 
and moved to over to her uh, her daughter's house. Uh, I want to say it was even in a different city. And uh, and so this uh, ex and she got a restraining order on him and said that he can't come near her. Well, what he was doing was he was using the app on her Mercedes Benz to track her movements so that he knew where she was staying, where she went, and he was making this known to her that he was stalking her. And, uh, and of course, she called up Mercedes Benz and said, look, you know, my husband is stalking me using your, your car. I mean, it's her car. She was paying the payments on it, but it was titled in his name. And so Mercedes Benz said, well, you know, unless you have title to the car, we can't stop him being able to log into the app and monitoring where the car is because you know it's titled in his name and so she she tried to shut it down she went to court a judge actually ruled in her favor that he shouldn't be allowed to track the car and stalk her anymore and they still uh, couldn't he, they still he still was able to keep tracking her so it was a freaking nightmare so you can see how all this technology is coming back to haunt you. Getting back to cars, uh, one thing that I encourage you to do if you're gonna take a long trip, uh, I always detail the car, get a good coat of wax on there because I mean, I had a lot of bug strikes and those bug juice will come off a lot easier if you got a good coat of wax on the car. But more, more importantly was the one thing that I had on my list that I didn't quite get to was uh, checking the tire pressure on the car. And uh, so about uh, coming into uh, to North Carolina, my tire pressure gauge came on and said that, that I had low, low tire pressure in, in the tires. And I was like, dang on it. And normally I carry a bicycle pump in the car to, to pump up the tires. But I thought that the tire, the, the com Toyota comes with a tire repair kit. And I thought it was also a, 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 a pump where I could just plug it in and pump up the tire. No, it's, it actually connects to a canister and pumps that liquid into the tire so that it'll seal up, up you know, like a nail puncture or something. It's not a pump. So I was, <laughs> there was no way, and I pulled into a couple of gas stations and none of them had, you know, they don't offer that free air no more. I mean, I guess that's, a, maybe that's an expense they, they don't want. And so I'm like, damn, how the hell am I gonna pump up the tire? I said, well, I got a buddy that lives in uh, North Carolina and I, I pulled in and stayed a, stayed a night with him. And uh, so I asked him, I said, uh, do you have a, uh, you know, I had a tire pressure gauge and it was one of those digital ones. Don't buy the digital damn uh, tire pressure gauges. Get you a good uh, uh, brass, it's, it's expensive. It was like 17 or 18 bucks because I went ahead and bought one. But what it does is it, 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 it lock in the pressure. So you push it on there and it, and the needle will go up to whatever the pressure of the tire is and you pop it off and then you can take it and look at it and see what the pressure is it also it has a little side button the same button that you use to release the pressure you can you can pump up the tire and then release some of the air to get to the, the poundage that you want now I'm, i like running about i was running 33 pounds all my tires were at like 29 <laughs> 28 you know. so they were low i mean they got to give the tire pressure gauge credit so all of the, the moral of the story is is be sure and check everything out on the car before you go on a long trip and uh, I, I was mistaken of course make sure you got a good tire pressure gauge <laughs> and a pump that works in the car so you know i love relating these these cute stories about myself is how stupid that i am but then you know what was amazing to me was i'm at my buddy's house i said why I bought the tire pressure gauge in the first place. I said, well, do you have a tire pressure gauge I can use? I said, because my digital one is not working all that well. Because the way it worked is you push it on there and you have to look at it while you've got it connected to the stem. It doesn't screw onto the stem or anything. You have to push it in. And so what happens is you end up letting out a lot of air to get that perfect connection to get the pressure, to get the digital pressure right. And I, I, I ended up letting out more air <laughs> from the tire. And uh, so anyway, short, short story long, he did have a compressor that worked fantastic, even though he didn't have a tire gauge. So I bought a new tire gauge. I don't regret it. I'm glad that I got it. I gave him my digital one because it was working. It just wasn't working the way I wanted it or wasn't easy to use. And, uh, and with this compressor, and by the way, the pressure on that compressor, for example, was, uh, I pumped it up to what I thought was 38 pounds, you know, and then when I checked the tire pressure, it was really only about 30. 
on the tire. So the, the, the gauge on that compressor, you can't trust it. It was, it was completely wrong. I, I actually had to go up about 42 pounds on that compressor to get to 33 pounds in the tire. So just saying, you know, you gotta have a good tire pressure gauge. Go to one of the auto parts stores, AutoZone or Advantage of Heart, Auto, you know, and get you one of those brass tire gauges for a long trip so that you can check the tire pressure and be sure and check it before you get on the road. So let's talk about this tire repair kit that came with the car. From what I can tell, it's a one use only. <laughs> and then you throw the whole damn thing away. Now I won't know until I get to the dealer 100% certain, but uh, there doesn't appear to be a way because uh, what you do is you snap it together and once it's snapped together, there's no way to take it apart. And the, the little bottle that sits on top of the, uh, of the pump is what's got all of that liquid in it that gets pumped into the tire to repair the, uh, the leak. Now, I wanted to talk about that briefly because what a useless tool that they provide with the car. You're better off go to the auto parts store and you can buy a, a, a tire repair kit that is multiple use or just one use depending on how bad the, the tire needs to be repaired and keep that in your car with you. Don't, I'm not, certainly not going to pay the dealer <laughs> to replace this stupid auto repair kit. I mean the nice thing is it fits in a little box in the, in the trunk of the car which is you know it fits in there nicely and I'm sure whatever I buy from the auto parts store may not fit all that well. But uh, anyway, I'm just, just another piece of advice. If you don't have a tire repair kit in your car that, that either came from the dealer or you buy at the auto parts store, be sure and get one and keep it in the car. Because uh, if you do get a nail, you literally just have to get the car. Because, I mean, yeah, you, you've got a towing service, but think of the inconvenience. You're going to be there on the side of the road with tractor trailers rolling by. You know, it might take them a half hour to get to you. Then the tow truck's got to pick up your car, and it's got to take it, to, you know. Now, it's all paid for through AAA or whatever roadside assistance that you have. And uh, and then they'll, they'll, and then the, while there, it might be an hour or two before they can get to to replace that tire or repair it, you know, and so that you're literally out an entire day of your life. And if it's at night, you might be out in two days because then you got to get a hotel room. Have you priced hotel rooms recently? I mean, I think they're running about $200 a night in some places, you know, uh, or more. I mean, uh, so holy moly. So I think, uh, let's see, a five dollars $11 tire repair kit versus uh, maybe two or $300 out of pocket for a flat tire. You make your own decision. If you're not a worker and you vote Democrat, I hope to God you can, you've can. you got plenty of food around the house because you ain't going to have a job much longer. Yeah, keep voting Democrat, you United Auto Workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah.